Hey there, everybody. I'm here. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, so it's been rough getting this going, you know. Uh, I've had such a hard time. We've had multiple live streams scheduled. Not that it matters so much to all of you out there. I know you're very gracious, but for those of you that have been receiving my newsletters, it's been a rough time getting them going. I say, we're going to go live, and then it doesn't work and so I'm here all right we got Jacob here good to see you again Jacob now you guys let me know if there's any problems tell me if there's no audio I think we got everything I think it all looks good on my end so I'm assuming we've got a normal normal stream going I never did figure out why the freezing those of you that were seeing the the videos freeze up and drop drop frames I don't know not my expertise so anyway I'm sorry Sorry for all of the uh, the false false uh, announcements uh, of live stream videos. Hey, thank you very much. It was my birthday yesterday. Thank you, uh, Mary. Thank you, uh, Val. Thank you, all of you. Man, look at this. It's like it's like I'm having another birthday party right now. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate that. I'm 41. I said that earlier, so I'm sure you already know. But I had a, a wonderful birthday went and saw my dad who lives in Payson, Arizona. If you've never been to Payson, it, it's a little gem of a town in Arizona hidden in the, in the uh, canyon just, just uh, off of what they call the Mogollon Rim, you know, where, where there's this big rim across Arizona and then the elevation drops quite a bit and there's all of these rock layers go up to the higher altitude so you know just just down there where the elevation is suddenly dropping in Arizona there's these little towns and it's beautiful country just beautiful there's little creeks and things flowing through great scenery for artists so anyway uh, I don't want to just keep going on and on talking we're here to paint but but I went fishing we caught we caught man my dad he can fish he showed me where to where to go he said cast your line right here do this you know I it was a uh, it was amazing so we caught these three trout cleaned them up brought them home to eat it was just a fantastic time then I came home and cooked out with my family here at the house awesome birthday so no oh, you've been there cool awesome that's neat yeah you know i haven't been there much there's so much still to discover so so you probably have seen things that that i never experienced i'm i'm still there's uh, so much here in arizona that uh, i i just have yet to to see it's all, all a lot of beautiful pictures still all right well today i'm going to be painting some sea otters my painting needs to be finished off so i did some studying looking at the anatomy the the structure of of sea otters and so i'll do a little bit of demonstrating on how my method for developing the three-dimensional form of an animal especially a little furry animal so i we, i did a really rough a really rough uh, uh version of it that i'm probably going to paint over there Thank you, Carol. Thank you very much for the happy birthday. And hi, Fariba. Thank you for being here from Vancouver. And thank you for the happy birthday wish. I'm glad you're here. Mr. Fantastic. I like your username. Very cool. I see you first time live. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's great. All right, well, I'm glad you're joining. That's exciting for me, too. Thanks for being here, Mr. Fantastic. Trout are yummy, says Mary. <laughs> I think they are. You know, I think it's pretty good. I I do not have a very refined uh, palate, you know, or, or I'm not very good at distinguishing between lots of different flavors, you know, but I think they are, too. I really enjoy a fresh, a fresh-caught trout meal. I caught 98 perch. Is that for real? Like in one day? Perch? Man, where was that? I gotta know, Teresa. What, what is this fish story? We got a real fish story going here. 98 perch. <laughs> Otters are really cute and friendly, says Margaret. Hey, we're gonna paint them. I gotta make them look, for, you know, the only purpose of painting an otter is to have a cute little furry thing in the painting. So I feel like I really have to capture that look. And so, 
you know, uh, um, this brings up a good question. You know, for, for me, when I'm doing animals, this has been a lifelong struggle or a lifelong study is what gives them that look of uh, some look majestic, powerful, some look cute. You know, there are features that seem to give us that feeling. And, and you know, I only theorize that it's just based on how it compares to our own facial and body expressions and what we interpret emotion through and so you know we see creatures and and you know you see a little creature with big big eyes and a little head compared to it looks you know it looks beautiful in form and vulnerable and you know in its anatomy and there's a, such cuteness in that of course it's still just a great mystery i do not pretend to have it all figured out but we love to paint it. We love to copy what we see, put it in our pictures. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pop the lids off of my paint here. I always use these house paints to paint my pictures. I love being able to just burn through lots of paint and not feel bad, you know, about wasting it when I need to. It's a lot cheaper for me to just paint with wall paints and it handles very similarly. I know I say this in a lot of this, you know, most of you have already heard me say all this, but for those of you watching for a first time, this is just my normal routine is to uh, just have my primary colors, I call them. And you can see there's a lot more than just three. My primary colors are any colors that I can't mix with the other colors. That's what I think of as a primary color. I can't make it, so I've got to find it. So I've got black, yellow, white, dark green. I've got this rusty maroon color, and I've got a, you know what I should do? I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, do that right here with the camera like this. I'll wait until I have the camera up and zoomed in and do the rest of those colors. Just, just for those of you that wonder, I'll just give a real quick rundown of that. All right, Paul, Paulino, Paulino Gamba from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Cool. I'm glad you're here. Very good. I hope I said your name okay. You know, I'm not so good with uh, <laughs> names that I don't know how to pronounce. I try though. I love, I love trying. And I'm glad to see. Oh yeah, we'll get a close. April says, can we see a close up of it? Definitely, we'll get a close up of that. And we've got, I want to make sure we're not leaving anything out here. Animals are very easy, says Teresa. <laughs> easy and great to paint. All right, cool. Well, that's great. You have some skills if they're easy to paint. Not have a verification check mark beside his name on YouTube. Just curious. Man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm... <laughs> I'm not especially competent in that area. Okay, okay. Looks like we've got any preliminary questions looked at. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything important. Beth, welcome from Mississippi. Glad that you're here. And so uh, I'm going to flip to the other camera. We'll get a real good view of this painting now that we've got more people tuned in. We're ready to get going on the painting i was looking up there at my camera that's why i was looking up i've got my camera overhead this is what it looks like this is my this is my high camera here and so we'll zoom in and first thing i'll do is just give you a real quick rundown of these paints right here by me okay so i like to use primary colors and this is what I'm talking about when I say primaries they are just a lot of bright colors bold colors not all of them are light but they are all very saturated and so saturated you know I think of saturated as a color that is as colorful as can be not gray at all and so I can't make these. So this color, you might you might think that a color like this, I call maroon, you might think that I could just make that by making yellow and red, take my primaries, make an orange, add black to it, but it will not be as vibrant, as colorful as this. It'll be more gray. 
and so this is a primary it allows me to get more color in my shadow so all of these colors are all for that similar purpose to get color as vivid as possible at different all different uh, brightness levels in my painting so I've got a pure black and white white black bright yellow phthalo green maroon phthalo blue that one's running low look it's almost gone there I've got a whole gallon of it waiting to be poured into there magenta a color I like to use to make purples is that real bright kind of a color of a pomegranate I like that's what I like to compare it with or beets beet juice is like that color just in case the colors on your screen are not giving you an accurate uh, uh, view of what that is and just a bright red bright whatever whatever you call it you know uh, fire engine red cadmium red bright red whatever you want to call it. I think there are many names for these colors and you know they all work uh, well as far as I'm concerned uh, for my purposes you know I'm never really really so concerned about the exact name of the color all right let's zoom out here and decide where we're gonna put our first little sea otters we got to make decisions about the layout here and I'm thinking that is the that's the base of my painting right there that's the bottom of it where I've got that where I've got that initial little otter with the baby on it uh, and I want to flip that around because I was looking at them you know they kind of they kind of hug their heads up close and that's cuter so I want to do that I'm gonna I'm gonna change these but but I'm thinking about placement here and so let's let's say to start out with we just kind of build like a, a big rock formation now I'm gonna just flip back over make sure we're we're still streaming good this is how I check I go like this I just do a little move with the camera like that and then I know that everything's running smooth if it doesn't glitch out <laughs> it's not frozen on the uh, on the YouTube screen okay so I'm going to uh, paint a little rock on there this is the brush that I like to use I am typically using a brush like this one and all my brushes you know I'm gonna get a little closer so you can see they they've got an angle cut I don't always use it's just this is just my common common multi-purpose brush you know uh, I think that maybe you have more ideas than I do maybe better techniques with other brushes I, I'm not I don't feel like you know I'm much of a master of technique as much as just I know exactly what I want for the end result this is the most diverse brush I've found it lets me get many different shapes and textures as I'm painting so I just like to use it for general purpose a picture like this I'm putting together fast and that's why that's why I'll use it and so you'll see as I progress in this painting uh, the just just the, the many different ways I like to use this so I kind of feel sad getting rid of the surf on that beach right there I, I probably want to preserve some of this I love that little reflection I really took time to put that in there so maybe I won't completely paint over that and uh, by the way I I discovered salt water for those of you that heard me complaining about my voice notice my voice is not as thrashed today it's late in the day it's after 3 o'clock p.m. here and I still have a voice I've been sipping on salt water that, that made a huge difference salt the saltiness was so much better and I believe those of you that said coffee is bad for the voice I believe you this is coffee it's bad for my voice mm. But giving that up is not an option so let's paint some rocks I like to get my brush wet and I just kind of dab it on a towel and so now I'm going to my first my first dab of paint and I'm just gonna put black on here just black because I just want to get the shape of a rock I'm gonna paint more otters in here after I give them a nice home and so I noticed they like to hang out on rock, rocky banks. I was just looking at pictures. I don't know a lot about otters, but I liked what I saw. I thought, well, that's really cool how they just kind of hang out on these rocky shores, find little spots to, to, you know, just sit by the, the shore, crashing up on some, some boulders that are coming out of the water here. So all I'm doing is just making shapes, light shapes against a black shadow, and. and I'm just thinking general overhead lighting right now that's all I'm thinking just general overhead lighting coming from the sky so let's zoom in just a bit more here I know we're kind of we're kind of far out and you know, you'll be able to see some 
better brush technique if I get a little bit closer. Just I don't want to forget to zoom back out, so I have a bad habit of going and painting off of the off of the screen. Okay, okay. How do I say your name? Jui, 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 Jui. <laughs> says hi, Joe. I've been busy, but I thought of dropping in to say hi. It is amazing painting. Love how it has come out. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate that very much. That's nice of you to say. You know what? I don't think I could do this without all of the encouragement. So thank you. I really rely on that. Not too good for your body, says Val. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Well, you win one thing, you lose another now, don't you? Okay. Let's go like this. Let's not get into a into a health conversation while we're trying to do some nice art, right? The good news is I've got a voice today and that lets me do this. Okay, so I'm making dark shadows and we're gonna just build a rock and this is how I do it. Wherever I have the black, it goes back and down and wherever I put the white, it comes out and up. Now this is valuable to know when I'm going to get to painting those otters as well because same thing when I'm painting the limbs of any creature I can just start with you know shades of gray I can always add color after I really get my my imagination wrapped around the idea of the three-dimensional shape but just as a start I don't think about directional light no direct light. this light this whole picture is light. The whole thing, this whole background is light. It's coming from all over. And this is how it is. This is why we see, right? I mean, this is why we can see outside. We've got light all around coming from all these directions. Well, the deeper something goes into a crevice, the fewer areas of light that are able to get down to that object. And so the deeper something goes, the darker it gets. There is no line where it suddenly becomes uh, shadow or suddenly becomes light. That's something you would see if you had like a single direction, real directional light, you know, like you've got a little spotlight in one spot and it's just going this direction. Well, then you'd see some hard shadow. So if I was trying to put a sun in the sky, that's for later. But right now I can build the three dimensional shape as though it's under somewhat of a, you know, maybe an overcast sky. It doesn't, it doesn't have a whole ton of, of a lot light from the sun. It doesn't have, a, you know, just one direction. So we've just got all of the environment putting light all over this. So where I go darker, it's deeper. Where I go lighter, it's higher. It's up into the light. So it's just that simple. Then all I need is believable shapes. So as you see me moving my brush around, I'm trying to use shapes that are broader here in the middle where I want it to come forward. I'm going to use shapes that are maybe more scrunched together as they go back this way. And so let's maybe put some, I think that's high enough. I don't want to get rid of too much of my pretty water. It's kind of sad to see that water disappear, but hey, it was fun painting it. It's there. It's recorded. That's the fun thing about doing videos along with the painting is that you've always got that recording even if you paint over the part you love you've got the recording to preserve it you know always go back and look at it that way so i'm scrunching the shape see how these shapes are more flat as they go back like this and that's going to give me some perspective so i you know whatever kind of shapes i like to paint with this long end of the end of the brush that those longest bristles right there I'm gonna bump up the uh, I'm gonna bump up the brightness on the camera just a bit as I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, you know what? This might be just a touch on the dark side. So let me just come in here and maybe just go a bit brighter. Let's say that we go here and go don't don't maybe. Maybe about like that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, and let's get back here on the focus. There we are. Yeah, just get a little more light so you can really see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're working with black and white. So far, just black and white. And it, and it works good for a very blue 
uh, scene, you know, when we've got all this blue, black and white works really well to get a earthy, rocky color. It actually can look slightly tan sometimes if the blues around it aren't bright enough. And I'm saying that right now it really just looks gray to me, but it really can look... Well, down here I'm pretty sure I used black and white for that. There, so, so you can get kind of a, a tan look with just black and white, if it's blue enough surrounding it. So this is kind of fun. Look, I've got a, now I'm starting to see something as I'm putting this together. Now I've got like a ridge coming out right here. And maybe that's going to be a great place to put a little otter. And so here's what I'll do. I'll make sure that that's dark enough that I can, or I don't know. I don't know if I want it darker or lighter. So I got to think about these things. You know, how am I going to see my subject that I want to paint? Am I going to make it dark in front of a light backdrop? Am I going to make it light in front of a dark backdrop? You know, I got I to gotta make it different, unless I really am trying to make it really camouflaged. Okay, this is just some, some kind of a big boulder coming up here. They're on this rocky shore, and now I feel like we've got a little home for a sea otter. So why don't we just zoom in a little more and paint. Paint a happy little guy or girl right in there maybe right in there we're gonna put it and so we'll get a good close look and i'll show you my preferred technique for for doing this kind of thing so i like to just develop the body first so let's do the same thing with black so i'm imagining a head that is right in here like that okay and my happy little otter is going to be looking upward like this. Now this is why I love these brushes. I can just work with that longest point and plenty of paint on that paint, uh, point and light touch and like this get uh, real small shapes and it, do it does take practice and control you know it takes some of that but but I find it to be a very good tool. So we're gonna go like this do the chest and this is how I think about just about every animal. I, I think head, neck, chest and then body like this coming off of the chest and even if I don't see the difference between those the separation between them right away I I make sure that I'm imagining the parts overlapping okay and then I'm gonna put a tail coming down they got those they got those real good swimmer tails like that and they got these big floppy feet and so we're gonna put his feet kind of coming out to the side and how am I gonna see those you know it's just black right now I gotta think about the shapes I'm gonna put in there to highlight those feet so let's just start with white we're just doing a black and white little little otter I'm gonna I'm gonna work on my knees for a while in order to get this developed okay we got plenty of paint I work with lots of paint and so their mouth it's like this they don't have a big chin now I studied I studied pictures and this is how I do all of my all of my um, paintings I study first and then I work from my imagination based on what I learned this is the way I love to to uh, develop my my scenes okay so it's okay if I lose some of it right now I'm just gradually getting these things in place so we're gonna do a head I lightened it up and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and start adding a little bit of color so this is where this maroon is gonna be real handy because it gives me a brown very quickly that's an easy way to get brown I just take a, a tiny dab of that maroon and put it in where I'm doing these these highlights and then maybe a little dab of yellow too if I want a more golden shade and I'm gonna go nice and light on the face of my little otter here we're gonna go like this we're gonna go down on each side for his cheeks and we're gonna go like that just enough to get the two cheeks coming down there and then we'll just blend this back so it gradually becomes the same color as the rest so that we can just see the front of that little nose coming off there and then I'll give him a little bit of a chin let's get just a tiny bit of that that light white color again I'm gonna mix just a bit of my color on this lid right here see that that's the maroon that I'm working with and so I'll take white and I'll take that 
maroon color there and maybe just a little dab of yellow and I'm just gradually putting these are just like I built my rocks I'm building the shapes that are emerging out into the light so now he's got a little chin under his cheeks okay now he needs eyes so their eyes are little so I think that it's very easy to always make eyes too big and so I'm gonna take the black and make nice tiny little eyes to start out with and so I'll just get some of the paint out of my brush get a sharp little point and it's good to know the basic shape of an eye too you know on an animal we kind of have a, a, a human eye that is sloped downward toward the nose you know that the corner that points toward the nose is lower than the corner that points up toward the ear so see that little dot that's all it needs just a little dunk right there and then these these otters they don't have much for ears do they you know what I need a picture of, I'm gonna wait to do the ears because I don't remember so that's a common problem too is not remembering let's put some arms on it. let's put some little one two and one two we get just a little bit in there it's got to be short little arms and they've got kind of a light chest so we'll do a light chest coming down like this and maybe lighten it a bit more here let's grab some of our light color like this some of that right there and some yellow as well I kind of like that golden color right here and we'll lighten this up so I can gradually just get this lighter and lighter as much as I as I want it you know you can take time to, to really dial in that that brightness that you're looking for and I can go brighter if I want something to pop out like the cheeks I want the cheeks to pop out because that's cute like a little chipmunk right here's the cheeks under the eye I wanted to pop out and make them brighter it's that simple if it's brighter it's gonna come out and if it's darker it's gonna go in now I still need a dark nose on this little bugger I wonder if these are considered a pest anywhere you know a lot of the time we see things and they're real cute and then you know locals will be like yeah they're kind of pests they mess things up <laughs> I bet they are in places you know in a common sense of the word I I uh, I always love all the animals no I shouldn't say all but mo most of the time I see animals I I always love the animal I always think oh man it's cute I see prairie dogs ruining the garden but I'm like yeah we just let them have it look how cute they are not that way for everybody let's put a little little hand right there and I'm just putting light where I want things to pop out see how it just pops that hand right out let's put some darker gray under the belly now so if we get that black right here like this and just go like this gradually darken that gray we want just the right darkness of gray so too dark it doesn't look like a white belly too light it doesn't look like a shadow so it really is just a balancing act getting just the right darkness so here's the belly I need to make sure that that belly gradually blends into the black darker fur so let's go right here get darker darker as it goes up there like that and then this is where we want the back legs so let's get get some more of our black that I've got on my lid right here and go like this little shadow on the edge where, where this this is the knee this is the shin where it kind of folds under and then we're gonna put a foot that's like you know really really flopping up this way because they got these big paddle feet on the back so I'm just gonna you know I'm not an expert on sea otters but I saw they got these big paddly feet so we'll just make some some big wide toes coming down make sure we get some stripes in there to look like the look like it has the bone the bone structure in there as well so here's the foot just make a few lines yeah you know it's not great not the greatest foot I ever did but it's good for this painting here let's put a little highlight on the top of the leg like it's bent like this you know and we've got our little otter now here's what I love about painting is you know once you once you create the essence of the image you know sometimes it's better to leave the rest to imagination you know maybe I don't need to have all the other details if there's nothing in there that like looks wrong 
you know, but it just looks kind of obscure. The details are a little bit hard to make out. Sometimes that's a good thing. You know, we don't always need to have all of the details defined just right in order to in order to have a good looking painting. We just need to have the story told. We just need the story told uh, in, in picture enough that, you know, enough that it looks like what we're trying to say. And then the imagination of the viewer hopefully fills in the rest. So I'm trying to get just the right darkness so that you can see little feet down here. I keep going too dark, too light, too dark, too light. You know, this is hard, gray on gray. So I got to think about this. You know, what am I going to make lighter? What am I going to make darker? Here's his tail. There we got a little tail there. Let's put a dark nose right here. Zoop. Like that. We need that dark nose on there, a little sea otter nose. These brushes are good for making little triangles, you know. You just put that point down, give it one tiny little drag. Sounds like one tiny little drag. Someone said that to me in high school once. <laughs> Peer pressure. <laughs> okay. Let's go like this. Let's make more of that white. I'm making more of this white so I can go here and go. There we go. Now we've got his little nose sticking up. And we're going to put just a little more, a little more light on this arm coming down. And maybe we'll darken it just a bit. Let's get a, a tiny bit darker to get get the highlights on the feet. Let's go. Dunk, dunk, dunk. There we go. We got toes. Look perfect. That's what we need. Just little, just little highlights of toes. Now our little sea otter's got got some toes. Let's do the same thing here. Let's make some brighter. Or maybe we can just use. Let's start blacker with that one here. Let's see what it looks like if we go darker. We got black. And let's go dark right here, nice dark shadow right there. See if we can get that foot to look look like a foot as well. I'm just going to get my lighter color and put little dots for the toes. And let's get a little lighter. A little lighter and I'll just go zonk, 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 make little lines for the little toesies. There we go. Now he's got a foot. You know, imagination can fill in the rest. Okay, so now here is a problem that I need to address. I need to decide which of these is darker, which is lighter. I want my sea otter to stand out. I like this great color, but it's camouflaged. I can't see him on my rock. So this is where I need to think, okay, maybe I'll put, maybe I'll put like a dark, I like to do these outlines on the edge of a body just to add like a look of reflectiveness. There we go. Now he's got kind of a wet, a wet fur on his back, you know. And we're gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go darker. I want him in this little crevice here. So let's take our paint. We've got this color. I'll just get it out. This is just a big gray rock. And so we'll go like this and put put some black shadow right in behind this little guy, just for the sake of seeing seeing his, his little reflecting back right there. So let's put dark shadow behind. Make it pop out. There we go. Now we immediately see the object. Let's put pure black right here. Pop him right out. He's going to be more 3D like this. Pure black right here. Dark shadows. You know, I saved room. I worked in shades of gray. Saved room to get nice and dark. We'll bring that black out and then I can always add little highlights in there. We've got the sun kind of coming from way up here behind a cloud, so I hardly even need a shadow under this guy, as long as it's just darker right here where, where he's on the rock. And then I'm going to make another one and decide where to put, put another little otter. So let's put a shadow right here, like that. And then let's put one kind of coming over this. I don't, I don't love these guys right here. We'll, we'll have to put some more swimming out there. Or maybe, you know, what's fun is I could, I could take this rock and just chunk sink it right down into this water. Right now it's up above the water. All I got to do is bring this water over. It'll put it right down in that water. It's an option. I don't know if I love that option yet. But I'm imagining an otter going right like this over the rock. Like this. And then up here for his back. Down like this. 
and he's looking down in that water getting ready to take a dive. Maybe he's getting hungry. He's going to go try to grab something to eat. He sees a little crab or something. He's going to munch. So we're going to go like this and make it a little smaller because I want it to look further away. We'll put the We'll put that teensy weensy little head. I like to just block out the shadow. And it's just because it's easy for me to think about what I'm doing, you know. Short front legs, but they're gonna, he's going downhill. So to make him look like he's holding his weight, gotta bend the legs out more forward. There we go. And then we put the body going up. And we're gonna put legs like that. All right, he's getting ready to take a plunge. Now I gotta, I gotta work on the, the head. It looked a little bit like a Komodo dragon. You know, we gotta get a little, little more fluffiness to that head. There we go. All right, now that's ready for the same kind of highlights we can put in there. I'm gonna take just a, a quick break now. I know that there might be some comments there that I'm missing, and so. Let me just sit over here by my computer and see what's going on. Let's switch cameras. Let's go over to my other view here. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> and we're going to go look at comments for just a little bit to see what's what's going. Oh, Peeping Tom went away. <laughs> Yeah, he was just pe just peeping out from behind that rock. I covered him up. Well, you know, it's it's fun to. Just, uh, I always reserve the freedom to paint things, paint over things. You know, well, I love redoing stuff. This is how I this is how I feel like I improve is is just by just just redoing things over and over. You know, not not caring about the end result as much as the as the process. You know. In honor of Shark Week, <laughs> oh yeah, okay, that's good, that's good, J-N-U-S-M-C, all right, it's not a terrible idea, we don't have, we don't have to make a gory picture, I mean, that is nature, well, we could put a fin out there, <laughs> the circle of life, <clears throat> all right. Just found this. It's amazing. Hey, thank you so much, Andy B. Thanks for dropping in. I'm glad that you're here. Their tails are not very long. Okay, a little shorter, you think? Is that a bit long? Yeah. Oh, maybe I went a little a bit long. All right. Okay, looks amazing. Thank you very much. Hey, I appreciate the compliments. You know, even if it wasn't true, I like being told it anyway. <laughs> It was like a hump, not a... Oh, I remember... You know what, Mary? Now that you say that, I remember that. That was one of the things I noticed, too, and forgot. So I'm glad you reminded me. Now, this is a valuable thing. you got to listen to people. You know, people people help you with their, with their insight. It's good, you know. So I try to get myself out of the habit of saying, Oh, I was going to do that. I knew that. I wasn't going to. I forgot. Mary's right. They do have a hump like that. You know, the slopes down. Probably a lot of you are looking up pictures of sea otters. <laughs> it's getting compared. That's good. You can help me out. I don't remember. I think their ears are pretty little, right? They kind of just slick back when they swim. Just little tiny ears. That's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> All right. I think the rock is a bit too big. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we got to make it part of the picture. We got the rock there, you know. Maybe we've just got got a, a real dramatic rock in the in the scene. I'll I'll give that some thought and see how we can make that rock look look uh, you know more nicely sized for the picture. Okay, now let's go back to our little otter and let's do the same thing. So now we've got the side view. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Give me a second here. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get myself some. Uh, I'm gonna get myself some visual to look at. Here, let's just look up sea otters. Let's look for some Google images. Sea otters. There we go. And so, you know, this this oh, I forgot which camera I was looking at. My head spinning here. Okay. So this has been the most amazing thing to to be a, a painter and artist in this age when. You know, just imagine being in a time where it wasn't as easy as just getting on the internet to look for the 
subject that you're trying to learn about. And since I learn, I'm just glad I was born in this time because my way of learning is by looking at thousands of pictures and banking as much information as I can. And so this has been the most helpful thing ever. All right, we got sea otters. Oh yeah, tiny ears, you hardly even see them. They're like, they just look like a little thingy stuck in their fur. Okay, that's very good. And we've got some, let's look at their tails too. I'm gonna to see what their tails are like. Yeah, oh, here's a good here's a good picture. I don't know if you can see that all the way over them. It's pretty, pretty little, but I can definitely see the tail and you are right, it is shorter than how I made it. So, you know, maybe I was thinking of my own kind of sea otter, platypus hybrid. Okay, let's do it. This one's got kind of a longer tail, look. See, see this one right here? I don't know if you can see that way far away. I feel like that's a pretty long tail. All right, I'm gonna take your advice and we're gonna go a little bit shorter on the tail and we're gonna arch the head. Okay, let's see what kind of improvement that does to the painting. Now, let's go back to this camera. There's my little shadows that I'm working on. Oh man, that guy's, that guy's hard to see still. Let's darken the, let's darken the scenery around him. So, Let's go like this. Get my black right here. And my brush has been drying. Man, we have got some warm, dry weather. You know, it's a little bit depressing, really. We're supposed to be having cool, rainy weather. <laughs> that would be normal. That would be the normal for us right now here in a high altitude, northern Arizona. We would have some cool rainy monsoon instead it feels like our dry season just keeps on going and going i love water you know i get sad when it spends too much time away okay i'm gonna go like this let's make a little ear Chunk, that's his ear right there just that little black dot there <laughs> that's all we need for now we're gonna put a chest like this Wink down, now we got his little legs. Put dark rock. You know, we just need to make enough difference. This is all just for the purpose of making sure we can see the otter. Ha ha, play on words, see otter. We want to see otter. Okay, let's put some white and we'll put our brown colors. They're kind of drying on here. I got a little bit of that. Oh yeah, we got red, red in the rock. All right, cool, that's a nice color. Let's put that yellow in there. Now we've got a good brown to mess with. I can use that on my use that on my little otter over here. I can come over here and start putting the head. So look at this. Let's see the difference that it makes. Sorry, I got a noisy, noisy computer chair that I'm sitting on here. Do this. Let's put the arch. Zoop. Like this. We're gonna go up. But you gotta remember a little goes a long way when you do these kind of things. You know, you don't have to go crazy. You know, I always have to tell people when I'm teaching how to paint mountains, easy on the slope. You know, for some reason, it is natural to overslope anything. It, you know, it's, it's just like, um, it, it's almost everybody I, I've ever seen learning to draw the paint makes the slopes steeper than what's normal, you know, steeper than reality. And I don't know why that is. So I, I always have to be careful. You know, we've got a slope on the top of this head and it seems like just natural human tendency is to notice that it has a slope and then make it real extreme. But I don't want to do that. I want to make the slope subtle. Start with subtle and then decide if it needs to be more. Let's put that bright cheek and those fluffy, fluffy puffy cheeks shrink his eye down by squishing that squishing that shadow look kind of makes that nice attractive stripe that goes back to the ear you know they have that shadow between the cheek fur and the and the uh, temple area behind the eye I like that there's all of these attractive lines you know an, an ongoing mystery beautiful mystery that I love is the attractiveness of people and animals. All these cool patterns in there that 
look look good and sometimes not so good. You know, there are shapes and patterns that that you know are attractive or not. And I'm always just fascinated at trying to understand what causes that. And I gotta be honest, I have no idea. I that's something that I just can't can't put my finger on. All I'm doing is just really shrinking that eye down. See, I just made it real tiny like that. And we're going to bump this up even higher because we've kind of got a view of it going away. There we go. Now we've got the arch on the head. And I'm going to make a little black ear right here. Now you got to cut me a little slack here. A little slack. We're not going to be too accurate because I'm just not that good. Okay, let's put a shoulder going up like this an arm going down like that and then we just got to put the black around it put the black shadows just to blend it into the body we just want to get just want to get a gradient where if it's coming toward me it's brighter so if the shoulders pop out they get a little more light it's just general lighting shoulder see that's that slight change in brightness creates the difference between the shoulder, the neck, and the head. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the body. We're going to put a little bit of this tannish colored highlight going up and over this way. And then we've got, we've got black here that we can make a gradient so that it looks like a round body. You know, if we put a sharp corner or a sudden change, then we'll have uh, if we do that with color, then it's going to look like it does that with shape. So when we want round, we we make the change gradual. There we go. Now we've got a round body. And I'll put a little highlight on the... I keep forgetting that I've got a brown here on my painting that I can use. I can just borrow this. Let's put the knee going across here and down here like this. Light across the top. Light across the back and maybe across the tail like that and then I just need my black again I gotta fade that in let's get a little bit of color in that black you know you lose color when paint mixes light colors with dark colors they mix you lose color so it's always a good practice to add color I like to call it a transition color some people would refer to that as a mid-tone I like to call it a transition color when it is specifically for the purpose of compensating for a change in color you know that occurs with the paint you know that's just the way I think about it I just like to like to call it that for my own purposes all right let's put put light here on his, on his little tailbone and maybe just enough light to see the leg maybe some water will help me blend this the paints drying literally in seconds it's drying so we need just a slightly lighter color right here for that leg coming down if it comes forward it really looks like he's holding his weight you know looks like he's holding his weight getting ready to you know thinking about thinking about where he's going to jump you know all right there we go just blending that color so it's a gradual change not a sudden one we've got just a highlight on the on the top of the leg Oh, look, it dried again. I'm trying to blend. It's not blending because it dried. Just like that. Here, we got to move quicker. Blend. There we go. We got we to gotta blend on that one. That got it. That got it. I better leave it alone now. I'm going to lose it. Okay, we'll shorten this tail. All right, I got busted for making the tail long. We're going to do this. We're going to, and we're going to make this arch on this, this head too. Here, let's do all that. Let's get the get the black in here now we got two otters I see otters I see two otters I could write a children's book call it sea otters <laughs> good thing I can paint I don't think people would tune in for my humor okay let's go like this and I'm gonna bring this shadow right up to the edge of the head so that I can get a little better arch on this this head and just really darken this rock like that. Okay, then let's get some let's get some white and let's get that that light brown color like this. This is how I gradually tweak my shapes and colors to get the edges 
that I want to stand out. You know, we want the edges to be seen. And when you're dealing with with nature, it's just filled with very subtle changes. And it's easy to forget how sensitive people are to these sudden these subtle edges. You don't need extreme edges. As an artist, I feel like my instinct is to overdefine edges. But I need to minimally define edges if I if I want things to look more uh, organic you know there's you paint what you want I'm not saying how things should be done what they should look like it's fun to bend the rules but you know in order to get a real organic look I want to just minimally define edges as much as I'm able so that you know we've got just enough to to see the picture and then imagination fills in the rest, just like I've been saying. Let's put a little bit of highlight right there, right here on the back of this little otter skull. A little highlight right on his shoulders. See how you kind of bend that down a little bit lower. I create that difference between the shoulder and the neck. Slightly different height, slightly different height where it hits the head. So I do that intentionally to create the segments, you know, head, neck, shoulder, ribs, thigh want to see those when I create an animal I'm always looking for those those segments stand out there we go just maybe it's wet you know put a little bit of bright bright reflection on there okay now it's time to put some rocks in here let's kind of tidy these up let's put like a flat top going across here we've got some black shadow that I don't want to look like is a black outline around my otter so I got to be careful about bringing that across strategically plugging it in behind behind that little otter head there we go we kind of got some some ridges in that rock now and I'll put my my color down here on the right side as well let's go zoop like that and down like this just putting some blocky shapes in there you know just blocky shapes to create maybe what looks like some wet rocks that are very dark because they're reflective you know they reflect shadows they reflect the light so if I have a lot of contrast it really looks like it's reflecting a lot of light and shadow and we'll shorten that tail here there we go there's an otter sized tail we'll shorten this one as well there we are let's put the ground under this under this little booger there we are and let's put some highlights in here in different places a little water on my brush won't hurt kind of make that paint flow out more easily let's get some of that lighter color some white and just see what we can do with some little to get perspective remember you know perspective as I round a far edge of a rock I make shapes that are squished together so that I get perspective like the rocks going out that way you know okay so here this is overly the edges are overly defined on this one now it looks like he's got a black outline I don't need that you know so let's uh, let's decide where we can kind of ease up on the extreme outline let's make a couple we want to get enough there's always you know in nature there's just enough and there's motion too sometimes you take a photo and you're like oh my photo didn't come out you can't even see it you know but in a painting we paint it so that it can be seen <laughs> so we don't want we don't want to make it like those photos where you don't get your image captured so I'm just getting light and shadow behind this this little character enough that we can you know, we can see the stoic little figure nice and proud standing up there protecting his protecting his rock he's king of the hill Put that light spot right under that tail. I'm gonna see what it looks like if I put a light rock here instead of a dark one. Let's go like this. Put some, put some black. Just making shapes, blending those shapes into the grays that I've already got in there. Let's bring that right up, right up under that tail. And it's just generally darker as it gets closer to that little, little belly. You know, maybe something fun will happen if I, if I just. I'm kind of careless with the shapes 
you know, just just play with it. Maybe there's some plants in there. You know, we could add some. We could add some uh, little bits of green. Who knows? Maybe some crumpled up bits of kelp in there. Let's do black and yellow. Let's see what black and yellow does. Here, just little bits. That yellow is uh, not coming out of the can too well. I'm gonna put it on my finger, and then we'll we'll put it on my handy dandy painter's palette right here. There we go. Now I got better access to this this yellow. Here, let's just put a few little. Oh, I feel like it could use some green. Let's grab some of this bright, bright green right here. Put some of that on that palette too. We'll get a big glob of that. But I think just a tiny bit of that green goes a real long way. There we go. Let's put some, put some little leaves on here. Maybe some white, a, a, a uh, just enough white to make some reflective leaves you know just just some little spots catching some reflection from whatever light is up there there we go all right then let's put put some dark shadow under that just kind of draw this black out like that and we can put some rock you know if you just if you just go from shadow to light you just make shadow get darker as it goes up under something you know you just you get that three-dimensional look real quickly if you just make it make things gradually darker as they go deeper into any area you know deeper where whatever you want to do hey let's put some more i kind of like the way that looks it, it uh, mixes up the picture a little better let's put some in here too I like that grab our bright yellow just chop it up i'm just putting a gl big glob you know these techniques they rely on lots of paint to get those smooth swiping shapes that maybe look a little bit like a leaf or, or some other shape you know it's so much easier to create those shapes if you've got a lot of paint on that surface let's put just a touch of my phthalo green we'll get a, a brighter greener look in some of these yellow areas notice that i'm i'm keeping my black i'm i'm really trying not to over mix you don't want to over mix things i like to mix it on the canvas but you can get mix happy and go go too far real quick let's put some little reflection spots just wherever wherever i want it to look like there's an edge catching the light ah now i got a happy little spot happy little sea otter spot let's put uh you know, all we should do is look way over here in the corner. You know, this would be a good spot to kind of put. Here, let's put, I want to put a sea otter floating in the water again. I loved that look, you know. We should put one floating in here. So on this edge, I'm going to put the water coming up. I better rinse my brush for this. Let's see what color I've got there now. I might be able to bring the water up on that rock here. Rock going underwater. Let's change the color to be bluer like the water. Boy, that's almost perfect. Look, I've got that green in there. Let's just make this rock going down like this. And then let's just add that bright, bright color to it. Because I want to create a higher shoreline. That's why I'm doing this. We're going we're gonna to create a, a uh, nice high shoreline. Now i got this real, we're a little bit, of, little bit of conflict here with the brightness of that. And we'll just bend the rules a little bit make it kind of magical we'll make a lot of light under that water instead of re repaint my water to be more shadowy like like the other parts of the rock i'm just gonna I'm just gonna brighten the rock you know a fun thing about water is it traps the light you know so you'll have one brightness under the water and you'll have this sharp line where it changes to a different brightness above the water and it can be lighter or darker you can choose so i'm going to choose a little bit lighter as this rock goes under the water so we'll just bring that line right up here all i'm doing is just combining the color of my water with the color of the rock something in between and the paint dries a little darker so i keep that in mind and we'll kind of distort the, the image we won't make it like a real straight image and i'll slope it out more like it's getting like it's getting a you know squished you know like it looks like somebody has short legs you get that 
that effect. And then we'll put the we'll put the sea foam in here. Let's put more of these little bits of little bits of foam in here. Coming up over the top of this rock, just little little squigglies that kind of have strands. You know, you make a, a little clump, then I like to just take the strands out from that little clump. Like it's being pulled apart because that's what's happening, you know, the foam is getting getting tugged apart if you want the look of, of foam in your picture. So let's put some little splashy foam right here and it looks like we need some purple. I've got a, you know, this is my primary blue and magenta. I like to pre-mix these colors, you know, but since I don't have them pre-mixed, I'm just kind of shooting from the hip. We're going to put some purple in there. So let's go like this magenta this is why I keep this around and here's my blue magenta and blue get me a real vivid purple just takes a little bit and if I put some of that in this foam it'll real real quick like make it more foamy and watery looking just needs a tiny bit just like down in here all the oh, oh, oh. just realized we're getting a little bit off camera oh sorry about that <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Okay, let's go like this. I like to make clumps of foam. I've got just a touch of that purple added in there. And after I make a clump, I make little skinny strands coming off of it. See, just little little extensions off of any any shape that comes out. I just make sure that I stretch it, stretch it out so that it looks like it's being pulled apart. You know, this is kind of the signature look of of sea foam it's getting pulled apart all right and then let's put that same shadow we'll bring this foam up closer like this now we've got a, a beach see all that purple in there that gives me a real good shadow to put a highlight like this on top of so then we can go like this kind of stretch those bright highlights across here put a little bit of reflection in there too here let's mix up a Mix up a darker, more purple color and just put a bit down here. There we go, just right under there. Cause see how I have the reflection in the other spots. I want just enough, tiny bit, tiny bit, just enough to barely look like we've got the reflection of some. This is gonna get darker too when it dries. So I'm hoping that that'll be just a very subtle, subtle effect, not very much at all. Put that in there, okay, there we go. And then I'm going to put my last little couple of otters because I really loved my I really loved my otters that were swimming in there. Let's put uh, sorry I got distracted reading the live chat got distracted. <laughs> I'm going to come back in about uh, you know in about two minutes so that you know when I like a 10 second delay I like to give give a warning. Okay, this is where I'm going to put it. I'm just going to block it out and then take a moment to uh, look at look at any anything going on in the chat. So this will be the last daughter. Then I'm going to move up to finishing off that sky. And when I do that that sky, uh, here, let's where are we going to put this guy? This guy. <laughs> After I said the sky, you know, paint the sky sounds very much like paint this guy. I'm gonna paint this guy. Uh, let's go right in here. Let's put the otter swimming back to the rock. You know, maybe maybe this is mama and maybe daddy's down here going and rescuing the little munchkin. So let's go like this. Head, and we're gonna make the body in perspective, sloping up this way. Zoop, 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 zoop. I just do it with black, all right. And then we're going to put some lighter color in there. And to make this easier on myself, mm -mm, let's see what we can do. Let's, let's pre-mix on the palette again, my brown. I found that much easier mixing. Now I, I like to just put it on there. This is why I don't paint on uh, stretched canvases <laughs> that don't have a backing. Because I like to be able to lean my weight on it. Because I don't have steady hands. You know, right here it shakes. Look at that. And then I just stick it on there. Now it's more steady. Okay, so let's put some let's put some uh, maroon and yellow. 
and white together to get a nice tan to put, put our little highlight colors on the shadows. And so we want a head right here. That's one head. And then let's put another head. We're going to make this couple of otters. Okay, so here is here is the adult otter. And the, oh, I made that nose right there just by accident. Just a little dot just happened to be just in the perfect spot. Look at that nose. Okay, and then we're going to go like that. Okay, there's a head. And there, now we've almost got the eye mapped out. Here, let's get some pure white and make a brighter, brighter top on that little munchkin. Here we go, like this. Like this, there we go. And we can always come back and chop off little edges that don't, don't seem to make sense. You know, right now I just wanna get the, get the basic shapes in place. There we go, we've got some eyes. They slope toward the nose, then back toward the ear, and you know, it's kind of looking down. It's got its head turned. Turned, it's looking up. Okay, that's not bad for the, for the head shape. We're gonna come up here, kind of widen its shoulders. We got neck, neck is bent. Shoulders gonna go up and around the baby, like that. And so then let's come in here and put a tiny little, you know, you can do it like the simplest head, any kind of head. Sorry, I said I was going to get over there a lot, a lot sooner than this, but I'm painting this. Okay, two eyes, zoop, a nose, that's a head right there. You know, we're just, it's just such an easy way. I just feel like, like it's a... We're so sensitive to that pattern, two eyes and a nose. If you just get that, then you've got a face. You've got some kind of face and, and you know, uh, it's fun to see what your imagination puts together with the information you've got. And so it always just uses what, inf what information you have. And sometimes less is more for that reason. It's because the imagination can do a lot. I'm gonna put the other arm. So we got two arms around a little head there. We're gonna go dark little ear just a little dunk right there, and I'm gonna lighten that because we don't want a lot of ear. And these, they were tiny little ears. Let's do both of them. Let's do ears on, on daddy and baby. All right, and then we go fat belly out in the water. Let's blend that ear a bit. Get my light color. And let's go like this. So you can see how much I like to use this brush for details. You know, because all I do is just barely touch that longest corner. And this is just my method. You know, I just over the years have found that the easiest way to, to really get whatever I want on, on that canvas. So I'm just gonna barely make a tiny little, tiny little strip on this side of the eyeball like that. There we go. Now we got a little head in there. Okay. I should zoom in more. Here, yeah, we'll zoom in, then we'll come back to it. Here. There we go. That's what it looks like. We'll do some more on it. I'm going to take a break from the tedious work. Okay. Let's see here. Flip over. Hey there, I'm back again. I gotta take a breather, man. I get into that detail work at the time. I lose my sense of time. It's like going to sleep, really. I go into a trance and I'm just like, okay, now I'm painting this, now I'm painting this. Next thing I know, it's tomorrow. Man, the time just goes. <laughs> and that's how my life disappears, okay? And I'm just reading the live chat. Let's see. Let's see what interesting things are being said here. I did this method of painting. It's amazing. All right. Cool. Awesome. That's good to hear. Paint. Oh, go to the beginning of the video. It just uh, talk all about the paint. And, uh, you know, there's a FAQ that, uh, at muraljoe.com to see the kinds of paint that I like to use. Also, my video, Getting Started with materials and paint is a free download 
there. I love to sell my all video bundle because I think that that is also a very helpful tool for understanding in a, in a very organized matter. Understanding if you go through the landscape bundle, it's organized in bundles. You know, I uh, videos that are much too long for YouTube, but I think are the fundamentals that I've learned from. You can check out the videos I sell on my website. All of that information is out there. You're welcome, Paula. It's an honor to have you tuning in again. I'm glad that you're here. I've learned so much, says Lirelia. Lirelia. I hope I said that right. And lighting and color shifting from you. Glad I found your content. All right. That's a very nice compliment. You know, my biggest thrill in life is feeling like I've been helpful. And so, you know, you're making my dreams come true with just, just by saying thank you really makes me feel a mile high. You know, it's, it's a good feeling. So thank you. I'm always trying to look at nature. Hey, that's what I do. I, I love getting out, looking at nature. And so this is Val. Val says, uh, nature and objects to find shapes. Not good at it. Maybe with practice I can get better. You definitely can get better. I can assure you that you get better. You know, sometimes you just need a, a little thing to tip you off. Just something that triggers a way of thinking. And so, you know what, I, I, I was just glued to things as I was desperately looking for answers, spent long hours staring. I would, you want to know something funny? I've said this before. I blink my eyes real fast to look at water or fire because they're in motion. Well, blinking, <laughs> it feels so ridiculous, you know, but li literally I would do this. I'd look at it and open real fast and close, open real fast and close because then you know, your short-term memory puts a still image in your mind for, I don't know, two or three seconds of what you just saw. And so it's like rapidly thumbing through still images. I found that easier to, to observe the movement and the shapes of fire and water. I don't want to make you look like a crazy person. <laughs> As you're out by the lake, everybody's enjoying the scenery and you're just sitting there going like this. <laughs> Boy, that guy really needs to get out. <laughs> No, it's, you know, it's a tool. Anyway, my point, I think it's very much like learning to read. It's very overwhelming to look at big words and sentences when, when you're a child before you've learned that. But familiarity, your, your mind stores some information and it, it accumulates and becomes familiar so that you're always building on what you can rapidly interpret. It gets greater and greater. So you, it does improve. <clears throat> what a great tip, don't care if I look crazy. That's kind of how I was. I was like, hey man, I'm finding answers right now. <laughs> Besides, I am a little crazy. Telling people about your videos and I tell them about your painting tips. Hey, thank you, Mary, that's great. I love that you tell people about that. <clears throat> thank you, that makes me feel great. That's how I, you know, that's how I've always relied on my, my business is word of mouth, just the organic. If it wasn't good enough for people to tell their friends to try it, I just thought I'm in the wrong wrong line of work. That was my philosophy. And since I'm a very simple-minded person, you know, I don't get into complex strategies. And I know those complex strategies can be very successful and work really well. I just don't have the mind for it. So the simple route was do a good job, enough that people talk about it. That was my business strategy. All right, what the hell is working on a wall paint? <laughs> that is a funny username. <clears throat> uh, let's see, 30 meters long. And man, this really helps. Hey, all right, I'm glad that helps. Thanks for telling me that. So standing in my own way with my perfection thinking of details, really got to work away from that to get more productive. Hey, that's good thinking. Nothing wrong with details. Build the big shapes first. Then and then you can budget the available energy and time for for details. I love details, but I think, you know, a picture can look so fantastic if you decide where to put the details and and steer away from the rest. You know, just you know, aren't those pictures beautiful that they have a real shallow depth of field? You see the flower and its crisp edges, and then there's all of this imagery behind it that's just whoo, 
just blurred out because of the way the lens is focused. Makes for a great picture. In the same way, I think that uh, strategizing where you put the details, what is the picture about, and then leaving them out of other places can sometimes make the picture better, not worse, you know. Just uh, food for thought. You know, I haven't seen your painting, uh, and uh, it's, it's your decision. You'll, you'll do a better job than I will deciding, you know, where it belongs. But I think your thinking is right on. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, thank you, Nora, for saying it's a stunning scene. That's a nice compliment. When do we get to see your kids, says Paul. <laughs> yeah, my kids. I do show them off here and there. You know, my teenagers, they're teenagers now. I got a, a 14 and 16 year old. They're not too excited about getting on my YouTube videos. You know, they don't want to be embarrassed by dad. Big risk when you're a teenager. Here's my salt water. I'm feeling my voice start to go. And so, uh, you know, Zayden, my five-year-old, just started kindergarten. Cutest thing ever. I, I try to get him on video whenever I can when he comes in, you know. But you can't stage those things because here's the problem. I get the kid on camera and then the, he gets, he'll get super bratty, you know. He doesn't understand that my reputation's on the line. And so he's the cutest when I don't stage it. But if I stage it, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. I like to make people believe I'm a good dad. You know, so I just I just wait for those magic moments to get the camera out. Hey, thanks a lot, Selwyn, for the nice compliment. All right, I'm going to finish up this painting now. I'll do one last look at the live chat after I finish this. So we're just going to put some little details on those swimming otters, throw some clouds in the top. That'll be it. And uh, then I'll just... just uh, Read a few last comments before we close it out. This is a long one. We're already running on how how much time have we hit here? Let's see. I don't know how long we've been going. You know, we started at three, right? Right now it's four seventeen. All right, I'm gonna try not to hit two hours with this. Okay, so let's go over here and work on this guy. Back to the big camera, and so we've got our little little sea otters in there or at least close enough you know we've set the stage enough that you can assume they're sea otters because we did sea otters in other places we made it you know context context is everything so once you have this made then i could just put little dots out in the water and someone might say oh there's a bunch of little sea otters out in the water too you know context matters so much in a painting all right so let's go in here and we'll put some we'll put some little bodies on these cute critters let's take some pure black again and we'll go in here and zoop, just color in so you know maybe there's some feet kind of going up like that in the water and you got to put some a tail maybe just barely mm, what do you think above the water under the water I bet it'd be under and so we'll just barely put a little bit of bluish gray in there for a tail that is under the water so we'll take some we'll do some underwater otter color underwater otter that's the color we're gonna mix right now so we want that brownish gray mixed with some blue turquoise water let's get this get this brush in this paint and we'll mix the color right here. Here's my blue. And we'll add white to get it nice and bright. Then we'll grab some of this gray. Brown, that's brown. But when it mixes with blue, it's going to turn very gray. Let's get a color about like this. Let's see what that looks like. When I take it and put it right under here. It wasn't very often that I could see any of the underside of an otter in the water but I like you know I like to add effects just because I know it's theoretically possible let's put just a bit of a obscure tail back in there you know just just some shadow so that it looks like it's not cut off the goal is just to not create problems right we don't want to create a tailless otter so if we just put just some obscure little dots it's like okay okay the rest of the otter's body is just kind of going down into the shadows and it's it's 
easy to accept that visually and in imagination, as I said before, fills in the blanks. We've got ourselves a happy scene. Okay, I'm creating a light tan color again because my paint dried. So I'm adding white to my yellow and maroon, getting just a light tan color meant to be mixed with the black. It's going to turn it a lot more gray when it mixes with the black. That's good. So this is still wet down here. I'm going to do a bit of light on the belly. And I'll keep, keep mixing that. Oh, we need more yellow. Look how that's more pink. So let's get more yellow in there. There we go. That matches a, a bit better. And then we'll, we'll grab the edges where the black is so that this turns darker as it goes down the sides of the otter. Just like this. Then we've got his flappy little feet. Up out of the water. Like that. And here, let's put... Put a little more on there. I don't know if he'd be using his feet a lot, you know? I'm not sure. Here, let's put the knees. Here, let's say we got knees. I gotta think this through. Parts. When in doubt, think through the parts. Okay, we've got knees that are gonna go down, so let's do that first. Here. Let's do leg. Okay, this knee and shin. You know, I'm just making a little I hardly need to worry about the details. If, as long as there's just some separation of parts, you know, we can kind of imagine the details. So then we grab some black and put the feet. I'm just going to put like just some, some black flappy shapes, just going like that. And then we'll grab the black, blend it in, make it all kind of obscure. Because I don't want to get into a detailed project trying to paint perfect little otter feet. You know, I just want enough there that it doesn't look wrong. So, like I said, when I'm not an expert at some subject and I don't want to take the time to become that expert, I just try to let imagination fill in the blanks here. Go like this, get get these blended a bit more so it's not such contrast. I don't want it so black and so white. You know, I'm just kind of stirring these colors together. <clears throat> All right. You know, I'm thinking about thinking about pictures I saw, and it seems like they kind of flop their feet apart a little bit. Let's put some shadow in between, like that. Oh, there, just, just that little dot of shadow kind of looks like the feeder. Maybe just flopping apart a little. Like that. Oh, now he's got little toesies. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. And bring this body around. It looks like the body could be just a bit more plump, maybe. Just a touch. Oh, I forgot about the baby's body. Oh, how could I do that? Okay, let's go like this. Okay, we just got to put a little black shadow right in here. Zoop. Right there. Now we got a shadow between baby and adult. Mm. Right in there. Let's put the baby's back going up. Like that. There we are. Now just a, an extra extra bit of highlight on the baby's knee and back. Right there. We just need little bumps. You know, like I said, it's amazing what imagination does with obscure details. So we just go like that we got the arm got the arm right there we got the head right there I'm gonna lighten that head I like I like that head but I feel like it needs a just a bit more light right in here and I think it'll get more of that arched look that, that Mary was talking about if I kind of highlight that front of the face there we go and here we'll highlight the top we'll get just a bit more light on the very top to round the head there, look, now it's more round. You get light right there, light right there. 
light on the knee, light on the foot. And, you know, we got light on this knee, light on this foot, just little dots. Light and shadow seem so much more powerful than, than uh, shapes, you know, than exact shapes, accurate shapes. And if you just get light and shadow in there. Okay, so now all it's missing is some good transition. So let's put, let's put some blue gray in there under it. So we've got, you know, maybe a, just a touch of, of reflection happening on that blue water. Let's just put this darker color right down here. Like this, put a few little dabs in here. Just a tiny bit. And then we need some, some white maybe. Here, let's bring that up, make his head. He's really floating, really floating in that water. Here, maybe I'll put a tiny bit more black behind the head, round it out. His head got kind of square when I did that. There we are. There, see that gray transition just kind of puts, puts it in the water. And then we'll look for any little things that are, that are an eyesore, like, oh, that doesn't look like a natural shape. Anything in there that just kind of sticks out to me as, as unnatural looking. That leg looks kind of bright to me. This leg, you know, looks kind of bright, so I'm just going to darken it a bit. Right there. We just don't need those attention grabbers in the picture. There we go. Now it needs some foam. You know, I want to put some foam across the water that matches the rest of the scene. So I'm going to rinse out my brush and to finish this off, really tie it, tie it in. I'm going to make my, my purple color. I kind of need a different palette. I'm going to use a different paint lid here. This is the lid to my green, my green right here. So I'll mix a purple. We'll go white and we'll add that red and magenta to it to make it purple. You can see I've got a lot of gray color still in my brush. That's going to be just fine. Let's put some of that blue in. This is my, I like to call it phthalo blue. Even though they don't call it that at the paint store, they just have blue, you know, just blue pigment. And they always just use it to mix with other colors. But I find it to be very similar to a phthalo blue, a real turquoise phthalo blue. Okay, so we've got a light gray violet now. And I'm going to use that to create some sea foam. Look, we already got little spots of foam in here. So I'll come in here and just make blobs and then strands coming off the blobs. Blob, blob. Like this, let's make little. If I make these all up around, you know, it helps, it helps tie this, make this picture, you know. I feel it makes it come together look like it's in the water, you know. I just look, I'm separating the feet a little more by putting that white in between them. You know, I want to have big shapes and little shapes with this foam. If I want real believable foam, I got to put little, little dots of it, big stretched out strands of it, medium size. You know, just think small, medium, large. You got small, medium, large represented. You know, it makes the picture look more natural if you've got that, if you've got that in there. Let's go, now I want the back to show up. I want the back of my crater to show up. So I'm gonna go pure white right here and see if that helps. Let's just put pure white stripe going sea foam. Just strategically putting it right there just to make just to make the shape show up. I guess it didn't really need that, did it? Didn't need it. Let's put the black as it pops right forward. I need that to go back into the picture. So I'm going to create a light gray. I'm going to go like this. Everywhere I've got that dark black. I'm going to make it real like it's reflecting all of that light gray violet light that's all over. I think I'll get a lot better distance in my picture. This is just my adjustment process. Maybe it's covered with uh, some foam. Maybe there's little spots of sea foam coming up on, on this little otter too. 
There we go. Just making it more obscure to just really tie it into the picture. Okay. I think I'll, I think I'll call it good. I definitely think that that could use maybe a little improvement on perspective, but I'm not going to sweat it. You know, I'll, I'll leave the masterpiece to you. You know, I like to, I like to dabble with it enough to feel like I've found, found a good method, but then, you know, move on to the next thing. I'm, a, I'm about the adventure of kind of finding ways, finding answers, ways to do things. I really like that. And so I won't worry too much about, about completely dialing in the accurate shapes here. Of course, I say that, but then pulling off of it is a, is another battle. There we go. We got some foam in there. I'm going to widen his body a bit. I want to make him a little fatter. I think that's one thing that looks a little bit funny to me is the skinny shape of it. There we go. Oh, that looks better. I like that. Fatter shape. That really, that really helped it for me. Okay, let's put more white. Let's put like some little splashies coming up here too. That will make this guy stand out more too. We got foam on the seashore. Let me wash out my brush. Get some, get some brighter color. I've got that gray and now I'm thinking I want to get some little splashies going. Let's go little tiny dots, scribble it around, bring it right up to the chin of this critter, like this. All right, where's that purple that I made right here? Here's that purple. I can put just a bit of shadow in my, in my splashes with purple. There's some shadow. It gets darker when it dries. You know, you'll really see that purple, blue, purple, whatever it is. Yeah, let's put some reflection on the rocks. Like this. But right here we'd have a reflection of the otter, wouldn't we? Let's put a, a dark reflection. Yeah, that's the otter. Just, just a couple dark stripes. Yeah, that's the otter's body reflecting on the rock. And then that bit of blue. Oh, we're getting off. We're getting off the frame. Let's do this. Zoom out just a touch. There we go. That's what I'm working on. Let's zoom out and finish this guy. <clears throat> okay, then I'll get that phthalo green. I love this color. I just love it. Get that bright green and put that right in here, swooping up on this white water. This white water is just splashing right off there and it comes up on this shore. Let's put more splashes in there. There we are. I like that purple in there too, that's nice. Put some more of that purpley color so that it's not too extreme. We don't want it all we don't want this one little splash hogging all the attention. I just want it just to, just to, you know, continue the effect of these splashy, splashy shorelines. There we go. We just got a little bit of a splash there. Let's put a little in here too. Some bright white coming up behind this rock, like that. That needs more shadow. Something looks weird about that. Something looks kind of funny about the way this is hitting the rock. I'm going to put this blue in there to make it, to really create that edge. You know, the blue helps it go back instead of looking like a 2D object that's too close to me. So blue will send it, send it back in the picture for me. 
There we go. That otter's getting splashed. All right. Now, how about in here? We got we got this spot. We got this spot in here. Let's go right over here. And we got to tidy up this rock here. Let's zoom out so you can see the whole picture. Let's go like this. I just want to make this rock look like it's part of the picture, just a little better, you know. Our scene's coming together here. So I want the shoreline to continue right in here. We'll put we'll put the water going all the way around like this. Look, it'll go up and around like this. We'll put the dark colors in there. And we'll put the, the watercolor in. Here, let's put the turquoise. Grab some blue. Get those together. Like this. And we'll put, put some brighter, brighter rock color coming through there. Where was my, my palette that I mixed my gray on? Yeah, I can just use black and white, really. Let's put white in here. Let's put black. Those were my rock colors. That's what I used to create the rock. So I can just take those same colors and make that water coming right up to the edge of this rock. Here we are. It's just a lot more blue and green. Hopefully make the contrast lower. Then we'll just obscure these shapes a bit. And maybe there's light on that. Maybe there's light coming down and hitting that as it creates some shallow ground. So let's make a shallow bank right in here under the water. Now we've got this real crystally looking water, so we might as well just run with that idea. We got the rock coming down under the water right here. Just enough light to see that that color difference. And then here we've got our brighter, brighter turquoise. Throw some white just to see it. There we are. Here's our underwater color. Now let's get that dark phthalo blue with the touch of black to make that deep dark water out there. Blend these together. And now we've just got that embankment under the under the surface. I went a little heavy on the black, so let's get more of that bright blue in there. There we are, and we need just a, a bit of white. It's all it's all kind of dark compared to the rest of the picture. So to make it blend, I'll add a touch of a touch of white in there, just making some obscure horizontal strokes. Just get the colors. The colors are powerful enough to create that that feel. Then I'll put the sea foam coming up to the shore. Here's my sea foam colors. My purple. It's got a bit of water. You gotta get water on there. When it's hot, dry weather, we gotta use lots of water. That's my gray purple. And I'll put some sea foam in here. Just some blobs of light colors. Oh, something happened. We got some noise in the living room. Okay, let's go like this. Just put in little bits of foam in here to tie it in with the rest of the picture, you know. I make blobs and then I make the little strands coming out off the ends of those blobs to really get a foamy shape like this. It was just a quick way, you know, when I'm not not real concerned about not real concerned about getting highly detailed results, just something fun. You know, just fun results that gets gets the gets the feel of, of what I'm trying to do. A little splash coming up. Let's put some of the darker color in there. Get a bit of a shadow in that splash. This this brush is not great for making splashes. You know, I will I will say that I got to kind of adjust the shape of the brush to get little little tiny splashy shapes 
There we go. Now there's a little bit of a splash coming up the side of the rock. That's kind of fun. Let's put some white out there. I like this effect of all that white on the water. Let's put some little bits of little bits of white on here. I'm just doing horizontal lines, just little horizontal lines. Create some perspective, some fun, fun texture to look at in the picture. I'm getting getting kind of messy though. Texture on water is a big deal. You know, it really makes a a big difference in the look of water is the the texture that you put on there. So I always have to be careful not to get too many too many shapes that are up and down. You know, keep them horizontal to get to get the texture to look like water that's laying this way. And likewise, you know, you, you just get a basic texture that, that looks like waves. And, you know, you cover the whole, whole canvas with that. All you need is, is just a real, a real basic representation of just little kind of triangle wave shapes. You don't need anything real fancy. And if you just have enough of that repeating, then it's, it's again, a texture that looks like water. Okay, just trying to eliminate any any shapes that are, since it's that far in the distance, I'm getting rid of anything that looks like it's going very far upward or downward, because that, that kind of interferes with my, my perspective. So just making little horizontal chops in here, chopping it apart, going back and forth, creating some additional texture on the water. That's not coming out great. That spot <laughs> looked better before I touched it. I just wanted to some something to create the the perspective on there, you know. Okay, I think it needs more green. To me, green is happy, you know. So we'll put more green in there. We'll do that, and I'll use a bigger brush. For that. Let's grab a bigger one of these. This is really great for doing doing like some vegetation on here. Let's just make this more of a, a mossy rock. Let's do black and black and how about some here let's get rid of get rid of that excess black on this painting down here. And some blue. Some blue will help help uh, the look the blue just disappears almost. You can hardly even see anything but what that's gonna do is turn into a real nice bright green when I when I grab my yellow that I put on this lid. See this yellow right here? Let's grab some of that. Get that on the brush. Nope, that's not enough. We need more because it dried. Let's get a big blob of it again. This paint is real thick. The yellow is a very thick paint that I like to use. Okay, I'm going to dab it until it starts turning green. There we go. Just have some fun making some mossy mossy texture on that rock. I keep the colors dark. I didn't add white to any of this. There's no white and keeping it dark is what keeps it keeps it in the front, you know. Keeps all that that color looking bold and unmystified because <laughs> I put all that mist, remember? Put all of that mist in the in the distance. So now anything that I put up in the front, if I just keep it You know, if I keep it uh, without that light gray, gray violet, without that real light color added, I'm gonna go like this and zoom out. Oh, we got a happy little rock with daughters on it now, right there. Here we are. Let's go over here and put some green on that one too. Doesn't green make it so much happier? Man, it does for me. I love the green. I'm just gonna go over here. Push a quick button on the computer so I can see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna put more in here. I like that green effect. I really like the way that came out. So I'm gonna put more right in here. Black 
and blue. A little bit of each of those colors. You know, put a lot. Let's go crazy with it. Let's put black, blue, and get some yellow right here. Some nice bright yellow and we'll create some bright green vegetation coming right right forward on the front of this rock. Look at that. I love that bright color here. Let's get more of that yellow. Put it on there with my finger. Pure yellow. Now this rock is lighter than the one over there on the right. right. So I might want to go just a little bit of white to lighten this to get it to blend in with the rest rest of the rock, but I'm going to just use yellow for a little bit and see see what that does first. Just more and more yellow. You can put tons of yellow on black and blue and it will continue to turn green. It'll just keep on turning green if there's just the littlest bit of that dark dark color in it. There we are. Now let's just blend this in. So watch this. I'll blend it all together by putting some Blue and black down here at the base will get it darker. Blue and black. This is where we're kind of just coming up out of the dirt. Like this. Who knows what kind of plants these are. Here we can put some big leaves in there too. Maybe we just just put a few little thunk, 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 thunk. bigger shapes. Maybe some pure white to create, you know, just like we did before. Creating some little reflective spots just little swipes to make some reflective leaves who knows what kind of plant that is maybe some kelp that's hanging over the edge maybe something else i don't know what it could be let's go like that and now i'm going to start making that <clears throat> real reflective and misty i'll put black and white up here and we'll go like this black and white in there and then we'll put purple so we're going to do blue and magenta because that's how we made a purple to create all of that atmosphere that's in here so we'll make this look like it's kind of disappearing into a mist by dabbing that green right into a purple purple cloud then we can just kind of obscure the details we don't got to do a lot of details when we do it that way this is white just to lighten up my highlights. Put them right up in here. And I'm going to keep dabbing until it's not white anymore. It's still just a light green. Because I don't, I don't want white. I just want the color that's going to result from a mixing. I used white because when I mixed these together, things were just kind of dark. So I use white minimally, as little as possible. But, you know, putting that kind of white, gray, purple, color up in there creates this this misty reflective wet look that I want to see on this rock all right then let's go back to the black and white and maybe just a touch of that that maroon to get some of our some of our sandy dirt coming right up into the base of that just comes right up into there maybe a little bit in here I don't know little spots of it just, just make some shapes you got light and shadow who knows what's gonna happen by accident there we go all right now we got some kind of a texture on our on our beach I'll lighten it so that it looks consistent with what's what's down here it looks like it needs a, a a touch more of the purple in there, doesn't it? So, so I'll mix a purple over here. Let's get this, get this purple and try to get more purple color over here where it blends into the beach. I used a lot of purple to get it to blend into that that close watery color right there. So this is real watery in here. I want to use that that purple color to get that watery look right there that's how we get that reflective reflective watery look on there just use that light gray blue violet and then just throw it into little spots in here so we've got some smooth areas just some texture catching the light all right cool i'm happy with that 
That's enough. Enough to complete my picture. We'll just cut it off over there on the edge where I'm just slopping it with paint. And uh, so now I'm thinking we got to do clouds. We got to finish this up and put some pretty clouds. So let me wash that big yellow blob off my finger. I was in creative mode. I was like, I can't stop to wipe off my finger. I'm painting, painting stuff. Got to get this paint off my <laughs> That's good paint, man. It really sticks. No, it will come off. Okay, now look. I'll give you a quick, quick demo on some glowing clouds. This will be fun. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to take a minute and uh, just take a breather. I need to uh, grab, a, grab a sip of, grab a sip of coffee here. Mm. Coffee for motivation. And this is what I learned, you know, I was at a Circle K getting gas in my car as I was going down to Payson to visit my dad. Some health expert comes on the video, you know, the gas stations, they got little videos. You can't get away from screens these days. They're everywhere. They come to get you. You go to the restaurant, there's a screen. They put it on your table like they're doing you a favor. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, so I go to the Circle K. But hey, this time it really helped me out. This, this lady that's like a health expert gets on there. She's like, are you experiencing loss of energy? You know, after your morning coffee, combine it with some salt water. She put Himalayan salt in the water. I was like, well, hey, I'm, I'm gonna see what happens. You know, I probably am a bit dehydrated after, after the coffee. <clears throat> so, so look, immediately I, I find it helps my voice very quickly when I drink just a little bit of that salt water. Okay, anyway. Just had to take a minute before I get amped up to do clouds. I love doing clouds. Man, I love clouds. They're awesome. Okay, let's go like this. Frame out that picture so that we can see where we're going we're gonna to put everything. We've already got a cloud developed in there. And so, let's grab a... <clears throat> Oh, I'm just uh, watching the show. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm reading a comment here. I got distracted. I always get distracted. You know, I'm going to do something. Just watch the movie called Beautiful Joe. It is one of my favorites. It stars Billy Conley and Sharon Stone. It is on YouTube. <laughs> All right, good. Okay. <clears throat> Definitely not talking about me if it's beautiful. Okay. Let's go like this. Rinse out my brush. I want a nice bright edge on my clouds. I want the sun bursting through these clouds. So I'm going to start with pure white and add color as I move into the shadows. So let's go like this. Pure white first. The white's kind of skinning over. It's getting dry. I've got a white edge right here. I really like that. And I love it when the clouds kind of split apart a little bit. The sun's blasting through. So we'll put a We'll kind of redefine this with a pure white. Now that all this paint is dry, it was it was mixing together when it was wet, so my white is not as pure as I can get it. So if I come back in here with the brush after it's dry, I get this brighter, brighter edge. Since we don't have a lot of contrast to work with in paint, that little difference to me matters. All right, there we go. Now we got a nice bright edge on that cloud. Let's make another one in here real bright. Let's make some shape. Some shape that feels cloudy. But this is where you can kind of think a little bit about scale. How close is the cloud? If the cloud is very far away, you might want to make lots of little shapes around that edge. You get the feel of a much bigger cloud if you do that. Okay. Let's go like this. Oh, you know what that looks like. That's a sea otter. Here, this picture's all about sea otters. Let's make a sea otter cloud arch right here. See? Now you'll know something that the people that didn't didn't watch the video through knows. They or that the people that didn't watch won't know. That this cloud is intentionally made to resemble 
Hey, sea otter, we've got his neck going back. We've got his neck right there. We'll make his body kind of arched like this. We've got his little, got his little feetsies coming down like this. we got his body going over like this. It's a sea otter cloud. Yeah, let's boost up that neck a bit. Make the head come out like this. There we go. There we are. We can even put little shadows in there that kind of kind of show it. <laughs> kind of go with it. Here, let's put a second little foot right here. There we go. Two feet. Here, let's get rid of this part. There we are. Now we'll go in here. You know, you got to make it just obscure enough. Just obscure enough that it still looks like a cloud, you know. Now, oh, this is where the whisper. This is back foot. There we go. Now, there's a little foot going off in the background. Here's his tail. We can't make it perfect. It's going to be too obvious if we make it perfect. Just enough obscurity. Like this. Make a little tail wisping off like this. Separating a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Looks pretty ridiculous at the moment. Now look, here's what we do to make it glow. Start with yellow. Work in from the edge with yellow. Okay. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. You work in small areas too so that you can do this wet on wet. Okay. Yellow goes very close to the edge. I get right up but not all the way to the edge because I want that bright white. But we don't want a yellow cloud. We just want it to be getting yellower as, as it gets brighter. So now I'm using that maroon color. It's just kind of a rusty orange, a red orange. Okay, now I'm going to bring that right up to the edge. My edges are now going to be more yellow and as I go further in on the cloud, it's going to be moving toward red, right? It's getting more red as it goes, goes inward. So I go out here and I just start squishing this up against the edge that I just, that I just did the yellow on. So I kind of squish the yellow first, then I squish this up against the yellow, and then I'm going to take a darker purple color and squish that up against this around the edges. Like this. Okay. All right, now let's see what happens if I take some purple. So we need blue. We make purple with blue and magenta we can do it with blue and red too but there's enough there's enough of that maroon color in there i'm going to need a bright purple because it's not going to be so purple once it mixes with this it's really going to lose its really going to lose a lot of its color i think i need more blue at the moment okay here we go so now it's all just blending just blending 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 to get these colors to not be so extreme we just want subtle change so that it looks more like this, more grayish. Let's go in here. Gets lighter and moves more toward violet. There we go. More toward violet as it gets darker more toward yellow as it's lighter. Okay, there we go, our scrunchy little sea otter. I'm going to make it darker right here. Thicker cloud where we have the cheeks, see? I'm going to strategically make this more of a three-dimensional shape, you know, hopefully leave just the impression of a little eye in there, you know. Let me borrow some of this lighter color. Put it right, right there. 
Maybe I went too far back on the head with that here. Let's get this lighter color. Put it in there. There we go. Now let's get the darker and go here and here. There, a little hole in the cloud right where the eye is, you know, just a subtle effect. There, we've got our glowy cloud. How's it compare to this? You know, we don't want them to be too far off. I want the I want the clouds to be real similar. Let's go a bit darker. So I'm using just blue to darken it. You know, get that get that constant change of it. Moving more toward the toward the violet as it gets darker, but then even blue where the light from the sky is coloring this cloud, you know. Look, I can use my finger to blend that. Blend that more. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> All right. We got our sea otter cloud. That's funny. Okay. <clears throat> it's okay. It's just okay. It's not the best cloud I ever painted. That's what I get for trying to make a sea otter cloud. Let's go like this. Let's make some more. I made this nice dark sky. You know, if you look at previous videos, I intentionally added black to the sky so that <clears throat> so that when I come in here and do this bright white color, I get I get uh, more of a pop. You know, it pops out nice and bright when I do that. So now we're going to add some other shapes in here. I don't know what kind of shapes. Maybe there's a cloud up in here kind of coming in behind this. Maybe it drops down like that. All we got to do is just add the shadows in. Add the shadows in where we've got the heavier cloud. So there's that maroon color. Let's put yellow closer to the edge. Let's bring it right up, right up to the edges. And you can do this to any extreme. You don't have to make brown, gold clouds. You can just make this just barely, just barely put that color in there and then you've got more, just a glow, you know. You don't have to make the effect extreme. Here's my purple. When that purple hits the yellow, they're gonna kill each other. Purple and yellow, they just take away each other's color and you end up with something very gray left behind and that's good. Right here, let's bring that purple right up in there. Now this magenta will take out that green. See that green? No more green. All we want is just a little color moving closer and closer to yellow as it gets brighter. I mean, maybe it never even gets close to yellow, but it's just getting closer. That's all we need is that pattern. And as it goes to the shadow, it moves away from yellow and toward purple. That's the pattern for a glow, for a glowing cloud. We'll put that in there, put some of this. It's still a little on the green side, isn't it? Here, let's put, whoa, that's a lot of that magenta here. Really. Every cloud doesn't need to have a bright outline on it here. Let's take some of these and just kind of make dark clouds. Dark clouds in front of light clouds is always kind of a fun combo. There we go. And then we can put, uh, you can put clouds in perspective. That's what I was looking for. That's the word I'm looking for. Clouds in perspective. Let's do one last thing here. Let's put nice, bright. Let's put, uh, <clears throat> well, we got the sun coming down, you know. I want to put clouds back here. Just, just put some dark color. And wherever you put your, your light colors, you just make little holes in the clouds. Just a bright stripe. And I'm going to use Maybe just a touch of that maroon because it kind of makes an orangey color. Just a touch of that. Like this. And this will be the light just popping through these. That's a lot more than I wanted. I got a lot in there. 
Wherever you make this, you just blend it downward. See, wherever I blend the bottom edge, it's going to create light coming through the clouds. So I just need my darker shadows now. So we're going to use the blue, the blue violet color, like up in here. We're going to use that for shadow. And we blend that right here to make light coming down through the clouds. Like this. Like that. And everywhere we have that bright, that bright color just makes some light. Light right there, light right there. See that? How that color just moves. It gets more orange and it just creates light just popping right through that cloud. So we can put lots of clouds in perspective That's what, that way here. Let's put lots of bright white back here. Yeah, that's kind of a fun, fun background, a nice bright skyline with some evening colored clouds late, late in the day, you know, maybe six o'clock, six o'clock clouds. And I'm gonna, just going to obscure the edges, make this a little more, a little more rough, and loose technique, leave something to imagination here. We don't want to lose our don't want to lose our little bit of uh, sea otter. Let's put a bright belly coming across like that. <laughs> I admit it doesn't make the picture better. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it's just for giggles. Okay. There we go, put the tops of clouds on there. Now we got the undersides, we got the top sides, we got the light popping through. Let's go back in here and make a few tops. Going like this. I'm gonna blend those colors. Let me just borrow it from here again. Oh, that got too dry. That got too dry to use. Oh, I just barely got some. Okay, then we gotta come in here and bring it right down to these edges. Let's get some bright white. There we are, we got clouds. There, now it's not like a ridiculously obvious. <laughs> not, not too obvious. Not a ridiculously obvious sea otter cloud. Yeah, let's put blue in. I want to get my, my purple shadows back in here. Get this and uh, some magenta. Here, get rid of the excess right there. Some magenta, some blue. There we go, there's some blue. Let's put white on it. Mix that all together, get our shadow color again. There we are, just mix that in, get some shadow. There, I was a little, little bit too extreme on the eye. Let's just take a little touch, little touch of that, that orangey color, and make a little light so that it matches these little lights popping out from these clouds. Just a soft glow. <clears throat> so, barely got that out. Soft glow. Nothing extreme, just a soft glow where the eye is. Thin spot in the clouds. So it's like, oh, that glow part looks like the eye of the sea otter. There we are. That looks a little better to me. I'm just having some fun here. A little more glow. A little more. We can get a little brighter. There. It's the color. The color that surrounds it makes it look like a glow instead of a, you know, <laughs> instead of just a, a dot. I'm just laughing because this is definitely looking like I tried to make an animal in the cloud. Okay. This would be a fun thing to do in a kid's room, you know? It's a fun idea. 
I try not to take my painting too seriously. It's hard sometimes. Sometimes I get tricked into thinking it's really important and that I'm a real big deal and so is my work. And then something in life happens that makes me humble. And then I remember, you know what? I almost forgot that nothing lasts forever and this is just more about fun than anything. There we go, I'm just kind of redoing that glowing edge, get a nice bright glowing edge. Here's our little, little sea otter. Okay, now the last thing, I just need some bright rays coming through this. Let's get some white. I've got a real messy, real messy bunch of clouds down in here. Let's just kind of finish up these brush strokes here where it just doesn't look like clouds. There we are. Okay. So here's how you make rays. This will be fun. <clears throat> Nothing too fancy, really. You know, making rays in the clouds is, is really just uh, as easy as just putting some streaks on and just blending them out. And so I'm going to mix a color, and I'm going to make that color a, a shade of gold, kind of a gold hue. So let's just do white. I'll use this because it already had that color in it. Look at this pot. Let's do white. My brush is kind of dirty. It'll still work. Some yellow and some of that maroon. Let's mix that color together and get a color like this. All right, look at that. That's not very white, is it? Let's get lots more white. Lots more white. Okay. <clears throat> and then I just need some water. Now my water is very dirty, but it's still going to work. So let's go like this. First thing we'll do is get some water on the canvas. And we've got, we've got some wet paint that's going to get smeared and destroyed. No big deal. But we need a wet rag. And we need nice straight lines. And we need to make sure they start out from point. And you know where the point is that you're making a star from. So I'm going to grab my orange, my real light orange paint. And I'm going to decide where my light's coming from. We'll put some paint that I can drag out like this, white with orange. Now it's not going to stay like that. I'm just giving myself something to drag around. And then we'll just go like this and go like that. Right out from behind here. You just got to stay on real straight lines. Now we wouldn't have these rays coming way down in front of the waterfall like that, I don't think, you know. Maybe a tiny bit for effect, but truth is it'd be way up in the sky miles away. So that kind of makes my perspective look wonky if I make these rays. Now I have to know when to stop because this paint's going to want to dry real fast. So I'm going to come in here, get rid of it where it's hitting these closer hills. We don't want that. We don't want these rays all over my waterfall and my closer hills. We don't want... Oh man, that really stuck fast. Yikes. I mean, it's okay to have some, you know, but I don't want them to look like they go from far distance right into the foreground because it flattens all my perspective. I don't want that. So we just want to... We just want to... <clears throat> separate the far background from the foreground this way. So no big deal. It's okay to have rays. Actually, I think it might look really cool having rays come through. Coming through those coming over a hill like this, but I want them to be separate rays. So I just got to make sure that they look different. So let's grab a little of that white again. You know, let's grab some of our light color and just put it in a different spot. You know, maybe it comes over this hill and comes through here. Here, let's grab Grab some light color. Because there's lots of mist on this waterfall, right? So I want to be mindful of my direction. You gotta keep the direction consistent. Let me make this star out like that. Okay, I better stop right there. But but to separate my layers, remember this is not just a continuation of these rays. We don't want that continuation because this is miles away, this is very close. So I'm going to separate 
with this layer right here. I'll just repaint that quick layer. I just have lots of purple in there in order to get that color. Let's do blue and magenta to get a purple. That'll mix with all those orangey colors that I've got. Let's get some more of that magenta real quick. There we are. Add some white. Just something close to it. Something, something close to that color. Just get the lightness right. There we are. And just repaint that to really separate those. Almost the, the same lightness as that background. It looks, makes it look real misty. You know, if I get those close to the same. So again, you know, I just want to keep my layers separate because there's no way that this is going to that this light is going to have, you know, one can, that this waterfalls. I mean, I anything could happen. I just want something that looks good at a glance, you know, it doesn't create like perception problems like, wait, I don't understand what's going on right there. Now I'm just repairing my little white spots where I have that orange. I don't want that orange anymore. All I wanted was the thin streak. So let's just put pure white right here. Just really make this cloud glowing like this. Let's make some bright clouds here. Those got destroyed. Look at those. And let's put some Put the tops of those clouds back in where I wiped them away. They were still wet. Those clouds were still wet. So just knowing what colors I made them with makes it way less intimidating to just plan on coming back and <laughs> that's kind of fun. You just go on and on with this, you know, just make little little sun rays. Just keep them separate, background and foreground. Don't make the don't make the rays cross. Don't make them cross the background and foreground separation. Got rays coming out of there. We got we got this purple here. Let's bring this over. There we are. This is kind of fun. We got some rays in the waterfall. Got some rays in the sky. But now they're not necessarily on the same same plane so I feel like that that does it good and it's just practice it's just a practice painting just for fun nothing I'm gonna keep nothing I'm gonna keep around <clears throat> I'm gonna put uh, a real bright edge on here I want that nice bright edge on these clouds put a little little cloudies in between too. Oh, I'm flipping you off. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to do that. I'm giving everybody the bird here while I work on my work on my picture. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm gonna stop right there. <clears throat> That's it. That's the finish. Okay, let's step out of the way and check it out. Here's our cloud with just our little very subtle sun right the sun rays coming through the clouds or otter shaped cloud in the sky <laughs> a ridiculous cloud shaped like an otter but it's kind of fun you know it's just a fun thing that's it all right we're done <clears throat> all right i'm taking one last look here at the live chat and so wow that was a big project that was like five six paintings long i didn't plan on it being such a big thing but it was fun you know first time i've done like a waterfall beach and sea otter so I mean, it's a unique concept and that was uh that was not my idea thanks to to jacob and uh Aliyah. Mm, I forget the username, but she suggested the sea otter. So thank you. Thank you. Maybe Ona. I think it was Ona that suggested the sea otters. Anyway, I'm taking a look now at the live chats. And so um, 
We'll just read some of the last comments before I shut her down. I want to thank you guys. Thank you for making my job awesome. You know, awesome experience and uh, just fun, fun for me to do. You make it that by tuning in and just uh, letting me let me share my my you know what I love doing it's it's a research it's a labor of love I research I try to find how things work and then show it in these videos thanks a lot for giving me your time it means a lot to me almost two hours long I know oh but hey this was a finale and it's gonna be a while before I do another live stream I am done man it has exhausted me trying to do these I'm definitely gonna be uh, continuing to respond to comments post videos all the normal stuff just but trying to get this this uh, live stream thing up and running that is that is tough man and so i'm gonna take a break from this for a while till i get a lot more competent about how to run the machinery makes it all work <clears throat> always remember a finished painting is nothing but correcting a series of mistakes says jnusmc all right cool read this chat thread when you have time it is hilarious okay i'll do that i'll go back i'll go back and read the entire thing i do love doing that i like to go back and watch and read the chat thanks for thanks for tipping me off to that paula uh <clears throat> okay okay scrolling back down scrolling back down bravo says Ronaldino, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's nice to hear. We will miss you, says Angelina Sings. Do you sing? I love good singers. All right, thank you very much. Just checked in, so we'll watch later. Hey, thanks, Shelly. I appreciate it. I'm glad you did that. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else we're missing here. Just don't want to miss any last minute questions. Great painting. <laughs> Great painting. Come back again. Thank you, Susan. Please take care and thank you. Hey, you guys take care too. I'm going to shut it down. Nothing else to say except thank you again. I just feel like I can't say that enough because it's it just makes it so fun that you join me. So, uh... Always, as always, I, I always like to put a plug for my website, muraljoe.com. Take a look at it, and you'll see the things that I have for sale. And I really try to make those very educational. So if you want to really learn how I do things and, uh, how, you know, some basic, a lot of the basics, the fundamentals that I've built over the years, then a lot of great videos I sell on my website, full length, long versions uh, that you don't find here on YouTube. And I suppose I don't need to say that I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. You already know that, you know, everybody says that like and subscribe. I just figured that happens naturally if you actually like something. Auction off the paintings. Yeah, maybe one day I will, you know, I've got them saved. All these live paintings I did for the most part, they're all saved. But I was thinking, you know, over time, I'd maybe poke around at them, do, do little things more to them when I feel so inspired. Hate the hassle of technology. I know, I hate the hassle of technology. But look, technology brought us this whole thing too. You know, it's, it's a love-hate relationship. You know, I have to be thankful to YouTube for making this platform, right? That's cool. It's cool that I get to use this. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. I'm going to end the stream. Really appreciate you being here.